So in my photography, over the years, I've used a lot of different techniques to make cool pictures. But one thing I've really never liked using or gotten used to using is a fog machine or a smoke machine. When I travel here in Japan for photography, I don't drive. I take the train all the time or buses and things like that. So I really don't need another big box to carry around with me just for a little bit of added atmosphere in my photos. Now, saying that, uh, the good people who've created this really, really cool thing called the Smoke Ninja, it's right here, you can see it here. It's a very, very small portable smoke machine, fog machine, that you can use for photography, video, and things like that. And it seems like it'd be really good for the kind of style of traveling and moving around I do with my equipment. So I was really stoked when they reached out and see how it would work with my photography style and things like that, especially as somebody who's never really used a smoke machine in the past. And just so you know, even though they were kind enough to send me the product, I'm not being paid for this. This is all my own opinion, and this review will be totally just kind of off the cuff and what I feel about using the product today in this review. So first off, the Smoke Ninja comes in this cool hard case. It really reminds me of the case I have for my GoPro. It's about the same size, quite small, quite compact for the whole set. So this will fit in uh, any of the camera bags that I have very, very easily. So it's not really cumbersome or really large, like my image of normal fog machines and smoke machines I've seen in the past. So yeah, let's just open it up and see what we got inside. So when you first open this up, obviously you have the, the system. This is the Smoke Ninja system little here guy. Uh, very small, compact, seems like it's very easy to use. I've only kind of played with this literally for about a minute before starting this video because I really wanted to have my impression of this fresh and new. So I haven't really played with this at all, so we'll kind of go through it, stumble through using it together. But you notice it's very simple, just uh, four buttons on the front here, turning it on. Uh, three buttons for the different type of smoke that you want to create and use. A little button on the back for activating it so the smoke comes out. So yeah, that's uh, the main unit there. We also have, obviously, the bottle of liquid that you put into the unit that uh, creates the smoke. We have a canister here. This is empty at the moment because I put it inside there already and I didn't want to take it out and play around with it too much. Um, this holds the burner, I guess you call it, or the, the unit that creates the smoke inside the machine. It is good to, uh, I've seen online things like that, that when you are using this and you're not using the unit itself, you're in transport, to take it out and put it back in here just so the unit doesn't turn on accidentally in your bag or things like that. So this is gonna be an important little case for you to keep. Don't toss it out just because you've popped uh, the burner into your unit already. Keep this for when you're traveling, things like that. Keep it nice and safe. Then we also have a... And we also have a little remote control, which I think is kind of neat. This is a, a neat little <laughs> old school kind of style remote control. That's hilarious. It's got a, actual antenna in it. Uh, but it's neat that you can use uh, this for some stuff like that. I don't know if I'll be using it today, but uh, it's kind of neat there's a little remote in here. And then we have a little couple of accessories in here, which um, these are really neat. I think this is a really cool idea where uh, you can slide this open, gives you access to the battery. And then on the sides of this here, you can now slide these little accessories in. Oh, put them both in. Maybe I'll bring that in upside down. I don't think so. Hmm, that's weird. There we go. Uh, maybe I had it on the wrong side. I don't know. But yeah, it's slid in there quite nicely. And now they're locked in. On the one side, you have a magnet. So you can now attach this to things that you see in your studio, around the street, and things like that. And the other one is a little mount that you can put onto your light stand and things like that. You can mount this now in different little areas. You can hide it in things. And you don't always have to just like put it on the floor and stuff like that. So you can be kind of creative with how you mount it. So that's neat. And really they just stay on there probably. I'm just gonna leave them on there now that they're on there. So yeah, I'll just put that down. And then in the top of the bag here, we have two little bags. Just one that says other accessories. This will have your USB cable, plus an extra little uh, blocker knob orange thing here that you put on the top. And I like how on these bags, it's actually like printed on here, what goes in here and stuff like that. Any other maker I've almost ever seen, it just comes in a super plain plastic bag. So that's kind of a neat little detail there with that. And then on this one, some more accessories for nozzles and things like that. Uh, this one's a really neat one. This is mainly for when you're using the dry ice, it seems. So we'll try that later when I try to do a little bit of product photography and video here for, uh, for the video. And again, it's got all the little details in the bag here, which is neat. It's a neat little, I've never really seen that any other yeah, else do that there. So that's kind of cool. And then your instruction manual. Because I'm living in Japan, they were kind of to send me one in Japanese. <laughs> so uh, I can probably read this, but it's going to be too much of a hassle than anything. So uh, yeah, we'll figure it out as we go. So cheers. Yeah, that's everything you will find in your full kit. And uh, yeah, let's try to put this together and see if we can get some smoke going. Boom. <laughs> so first thing, basically, when you get your unit is you're going to have to uh, turn it on and add the liquid to your burner that you put inside 
and then you can create some smoke. So first thing that happened when I was trying my unit for the first time is for some reason, I couldn't get it to turn on. I tried last night real quick, couldn't get it to turn on. I was like, okay, maybe I need to charge it. So I charged it all night. This morning I arrived in the studio and I started playing with it and it wouldn't come on because uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. So what happens is uh, when you pull this open, there's actually a little sheet of plastic in here between the battery and the unit. And this is so it doesn't turn on accidentally while in shipping and things like that. I didn't notice it and I didn't realize that was on there. So I'm farting around trying to figure out how to turn it on, getting really frustrated as I do sometimes. And it wouldn't come on until I opened this up and I realized that that little piece of plastic was there. Pull that out and you're good to go. So when you first get your unit, don't be a dork like me. Open this up, pull out the piece of plastic and then you're good to go. <laughs> uh, next thing you're going to have to do is add the, the little burner here. So on the, on the top of here, there's this little thing you can pull, which pops right out. Then you have this unit right here. Now this screws on. So when you get the unit out here, there's a small part to the bottom and a larger part to the top. So just uh, screw it in here with the small part going into the unit. There it goes. Nice and firm. And then what you need to do is open up this little plastic purple thing on here. And now you take your bottle of liquid, which will also have a little safety piece of plastic in here, like a lot of things like salad dressing and then has. So take that off, obviously. Again, I did not think of that and I tried to pour liquid in right away and it did not come out. And now we just ever so carefully, whoops, <laughs> pour some liquid in here. It's quite viscous, viscous, it's quite thick. So there's not much of a chance of just dumping this out everywhere. I found this to be quite easy. Uh, I was quite nervous at first when I put this in here, but uh, yeah, like I said, it's quite thick. It's not just like water, it's a lot thicker than water. So it's just gonna pour everywhere. So that's really good. Again, for safety, let's keep the top on here. And now there's this little purple piece of plastic on here that seals it. And I've seen that this unit, obviously it's gonna get quite hot if you're using it for a long period of time. And if it's hot, hot, like you don't want to touch it hot, this little thing of purple plastic will actually turn a different color. I think it's pink or something like that. So if, you, oh, if you're done using it for the day and you open it up and that's pink, you might just want to let your unit sit there for a second and let it cool down until this turns back to purple before you start trying to unscrew it. There's a good chance you're going to burn your hands maybe, or it's just going to be really hot and too hot to touch. This just goes back on with a nice little clank here. It's nice and tight. And I'm going to take off the little plastic protector, which I will put back on. And now to power on the unit, it's quite simple. A lot of things like this, you know, you think you just hold down one button or uh, push it once and it's going to turn on. But this is really something you do not want to have turn on in your bag uh, in transit or anything like that. You do not want to have smoke coming out of your camera bag, maybe on the plane or anything like that. So what they've done is you do one, two, three, and uh, the unit did not turn on. One, two, three. Okay, that's interesting. You actually have to do it uh, fast enough that it will turn on. I tried it a little bit too slow in my tempo of the one, two, three. So now that it's on, that's great. That's good to know. I'm learning here. Uh, this is literally the second time I've touched this since I received it uh, yesterday, the day before. But yeah, nice little quick tempo of one, two, three turns it on. These lights will come on as you do it. So let's see if I can show you here. One, two, three, off. One, two, three, on. You hear a little sound when it turns on. Yeah, so now, the, now that it's on, the, uh, the use of it is actually really, really simple. So we have three different buttons. We have fog, dry ice, and steam. So fog is just your regular smoke that you'd expect to see in any kind of a smoke machine. It's just like, you know, atmosphere, it gives it a bit of smokiness. We'll try that later with the model. And then we have dry ice, which is that kind of, you know, everyone's gotten dry ice and thrown in a bowl of water and bubbled it up and stuff like that. So it seems like it's a thicker, heavier, kind of stays around the bottom kind of a smoke. So I want to use that and try to do a couple little product shots and video for later as well. So that could be kind of neat. And then steam seems to be more like, you know, it says steam. So it's probably really good for food photography. Maybe you're doing something where you're making coffees and stuff like that. You need a little extra steam or something. Uh, it's not really something I'd probably use. So I'll be sticking with the fog for the model shooting and some dry ice for the uh, some product shooting. So that should be really cool and try it out. And now on the back here, there's this red button. So when I first started using the, tried this, this a minute ago, I just pushed down the fog button. Nothing happened. Obviously it's not designed to do that. This just picks the setting. But now I hold down this little red button on the back and let's see what happens. We have smoke. Ooh. Cool, yeah. So it'll come out as long as you hold it down. I think up to about 60 seconds. So this isn't gonna be something 
that you can... <laughs> this isn't something you're going to be having on on your set for like an hour or something like that. It's basically to be like, hey, this is a cool shot. I want to have some smoke in the background maybe. So I'm going to put this down here for a second, run it. And we're going to get some smoke coming out of the back of Jason here. And now I got some smoke coming out of the back side here. It seems it's really neat and you can really pinpoint and it's precise about where you want to have the smoke. And man, it really fits in my hand quite nicely. Very, very light. Seems to be super easy to use. You know, so far, uh, I was actually really intimidated by this when I first opened up the package because I've never used a smoke machine. I've literally never used a smoke machine in my life. It's always been somebody else using it uh, on the crew and that stuff. So I was really intimidated when I first started using this, but you know, just going through it now, the setup, it seems really easy. It was, it was really easy for me. Putting in the liquid, I didn't mess that up. I didn't start a fire or anything like that, so that was cool. And then once you have it uh, figured out how to turn it on and stuff, it's uh, really not that bad at all. Smoke comes out real quick, and it's actually, geez, it's pretty, uh, you can see here in the light, it's pretty thick smoke, actually. It's really cool. Yeah, now, I'm going to play around and do some product shots, actually. I'm going to try out the dry ice mode uh, of this and just see if we can get some cool images of, you know, I'm going to take some shots of my ZF and maybe my headphones and some stuff like that and just see what kind of images we can get with this. So, yeah, cheers. Let's just jump into that. So the first thing I want to do, and sorry that I'm using my iPhone as a mic. It's just, uh, yeah, I don't have a, a proper mic. <laughs> so... Uh, First thing I want to do is just, I want to try and do like a cool product shot video of these Skull Candy headphones my brother gave me. They're all black. They kind of fit the aesthetic of this little uh, studio tray, tray thing that we have here. So I'm going to try to use these with the dry ice mode on the Smoke Ninja and just see what kind of like a photo or a video I can get with this uh, just playing because I've never really done this before and I think it could look pretty cool. And once I do that, I'm probably actually going to do a little bit with the ZF as well, and I also have, I'm shooting on, the, the new 35mm 1.4 Z lens. So I'm going to be doing a review of that soon. So I want to get some product uh, videos of that as well. And just for fun, I'm going to use the Smoke Ninja on that as well. And yeah, let's see what we can get, and I'll show you that in a second. So I'm just going to put this down here. Hopefully the audio quality is not too garbage right now. <laughs> yes, I'm a professional YouTuber. <laughs> Uh, now, when you're using the dry ice mode of this, there is actually a really cool little accessory that I showed you a second ago in here. In, in this bag, the accessory bag, it's this kind of like uh, interesting little thing here. This is an uh, uh, accessory for the dry ice, dry ice mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it to the unit via this little, this little guy here. Now, these don't screw on. They just get rammed in. So again, this isn't something I'm really comfortable doing with products like this, but uh, fits on there. Make it here, just kind of ram it on there. Great, so now that's what the unit looks like. So yeah, now I'm set up to try this uh, dry ice mode. So again, I'm gonna do one, two, three, turn this back on, because I had it off. Makes a little farting noise. <laughs> and I'm gonna go to dry ice. Beep. When I change to dry ice, these LED lights actually change color to a nice little blue, which is really actually convenient to know which setting you're on just by looking at it. So that's interesting. And I've never seen this myself yet. So it's just, it's flashing red in my hand. What's that? Huh, is there a, maybe I don't have enough liquid in there? Huh, I'm getting some kind of an error. Let's try to figure that out. One second, please. So I could be out of liquid, so let's just give that a shot and see if that works. I didn't put much in at the start because I was a little afraid I wouldn't have spilled it and stuff like that. So let's give it a little bit more liquid in here and see what we can do. Okay, so, uh, so I filled it up there pretty good. Let's try it again. One, two, three. I just turned it off. <laughs> so I did that when I was turning it on. One, two, three. Got a farting noise. I'm on fog. Oh, huh. what, what's flashing red mean? Okay, this is weird. Let's see what we can do here. So reading my handy dandy instruction manual here in Japanese, it says if this 
If it's flashing red, then I need to check the tank or uh, fill it up, which I just filled it up. So let's just double check the tank and make sure there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> cool. So what I think might happen there was when I was playing with it and doing something, I might not have uh, tightened down the tank uh, tight enough for the system to turn back on. So I just tightened it up there a little bit and it's come back on right away. Hey, this is good learning for me and you. So when you're using the unit, if it is getting a flashing red, it means you need to check the tank. Maybe you don't have enough liquid like I thought, or maybe you haven't turned it on there just quite tight enough. You want to have it nice and secure, it seems, a little bit almost too tight. Mine right now wasn't tight enough, so I tightened it up and now it seems to be working. So yeah, let's try this again with the dry ice and see what we get. Good learning though, this is great. Yeah, so we're dry ice, blue, dry ice. Let's see if this comes out now. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty cool. So if you can see me, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the dry ice. <laughs> I made the mistake of uh, I made the mistake of talking when I was doing that. So I'm gonna let this clear out, try it again, and we'll see if we can get some cool shots. But yeah, you can notice it's much heavier than the normal fog, and it really sunk in there. So it's pretty cool. But I got to be careful with my own breath so I don't blow it around and stuff like that. So because I'm so close to it. So yeah, let's give it a try. Let's see if I can get some cool video and some photos of this, and I'll try it with the ZF as well. So yeah, let's uh, just jump into that. I don't have all the time in the world to play with this, but so far that's pretty pretty cool with the headphones. Got some neat video there. I shot in 120p so we can really slow it down. And just a couple quick photos as well, just to try it out. Uh, it's really neat. Uh, the, the dry ice really gets settled quite quick. So if you're doing this and you um, really want to have like kind of smoke all around and stuff like that, you might want to have an assistant putting the smoke while you're taking the video or the photo. Just I found it settled quite quick. So when I put it down myself, come back around, it's already quite settled all on the tray. Um, saying that, it was really easy for me to just go real quick and do a little blow and it got like the big and I think that'll look really cool in super slow-mo and stuff like that. So now I'm going to just kind of play and do a few videos of the 35mm uh, 1.4 and my ZF there and uh, I'll kind of just show you that video and those photos as I'll be using those in my review video which will be coming out hopefully soon as well. So yeah, super fun so far. My model should be here soon so I'll just do this real quick. Cheers. shots as I said and now we have B girl Honoka you get the autofocus on her maybe I don't know uh, <laughs> there we go <laughs> and we're gonna do some portraits so what we're gonna do is I got my light here I got a little LED that I'm gonna throw in on her as well and we're gonna use the uh, smoke ninja again uh, for portraits and we're just gonna use the, uh, the fog part of it now and just see how that goes so we don't have much time here in the studio right now I really got till 2 o'clock and it's about uh, 115 right now, so I'm not going to like kind of talk over too much We're just going to blast through this and see what we can do It'll really be a good test of how easy this is to use in a bit of a time-sensitive situation So it should be fun. You guys will see the b-roll off on the side here So yeah, uh, I got to learn how to talk to the camera and not the screen, but anyways, here we go. Let's have some fun. Yay! <laughs>
Um, yeah, when we did the portraits, the smoke, I kind of moved the lights around and stuff like that. It was uh, worked at the end. Really need to play with it a bit more. I'm not one who's used a smoke machine at all, but his, uh, the smoke machine worked well uh, when she was standing and I was getting up close portraits. It worked really well. Um, when I was trying to do the move we did at the last uh, little freeze, a chair, um, I think there maybe wasn't enough smoke uh, to fill that area or I wasn't putting it out properly. I don't know, that's something I'm going to have to try again sometime. But uh, overall, for the portraits, I think just for portraits, it's something I want to try again maybe for BC1, the athlete portraits or something like that with work and it's so easy to bring the little smoke ninja with me that it shouldn't be a real problem at all. So yeah, worked out well for the portraits as well. So great. I'm really hot and sweaty in here. I think today using the Smoke Ninja for the first time, using a smoke machine for the first time worked out really well. Uh, it's really easy to use. I did have a couple errors like I said during the day but I just took the top off, re-put on the unit on top so it was good. And uh, all in all it worked out really really well. It's something that seems to be really fun to play with so I'm glad I got one. I'm going to throw it in my bag from here and there. Uh, you might see it in my videos when I'm taking videos of uh, products and stuff like that. Or just uh, probably use it in my portrait shootings and stuff like that every once in a while if there's some cool sun rays coming in or something like that and I want a bit more atmosphere because it's so tiny, so portable. Uh, the liquid seems to last quite a while as well and it's not that expensive to buy new more liquid. So yeah, thanks again for the people at uh, Smoke Ninja for sending that out. Thank you very much for Hanukkah for rushing out here. Uh, we didn't have much time, but it's all good. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers. <laughs>